Hey guys, Stefan Fouant here, and today I'm turning the tables on Kevin Olivieri. He is the digital content and social media manager for Juniper Networks, and Boom. he's always the one that's sort of interviewing everybody else, so I just wanted to put the uh, turn the tables on him today and get a chance to just kind of talk to him a little bit about his experience and maybe, you know, what kind of trends he's seeing in the, uh, you know, social media space and so on and so forth. So yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Kevin? I am Kevin. I'm living on the West Coast, but I'm an East Coaster at heart, so it's a bit of an adjustment. I'll just say that we're here in Las Vegas right now yeah. for uh, next work conference for work. Um, and I want to just say this for everyone out there. There's a lot of West Coasters who feel like In-N-Out Burger is far superior to <laughs> any other burger chain out there. That is false. Shake Shack is better than In-N-Out. So that's my controversial thing that you um, can lead with. You can do whatever you want with that. I'm partial to five guys because we got a lot of, of course, them outright, yeah. you know? Well, so. can't, can't hate on that. They're amazing, except the fries are too excessive. The bags of fries? But they have peanuts. It's they have peanuts. peanuts. The, like the, the game change. The true game change. I like the peanuts. Yeah. So t tell us a little bit about um, some of the trends that you're seeing in social yeah. media right now. Like, you know, uh, what kinds of things are... So the good thing about social is it changes every single day. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. So if you're building, a, if you're working for a company and you're building out a strategy, it has to be as fluid and flexible as humanly possible. Okay. Because you're just going to need to change things as, you know, Facebook goes through an algorithm change. LinkedIn changes their algorithm. Twitter introduces a new thing. Um, you know, there was a big push for live video a couple years back, um, but now Facebook uh, has begun to deprioritize that. Um, and so... Right now, I think some of the biggest trends, one of them regarding Facebook, is just the drop in usage. There's been a significant mm. drop in usage over the last couple That's interesting. months and maybe even years, mm. uh, specifically in like my millennial and Gen Y demographic. Right. People are moving away from Facebook and going towards Instagram right. and YouTube. So Instagram, obviously, it's a visual social network. People are on there and they're, they're sharing their life. Um, I think one of the best things they've added is the stories feature, where you can just basically do the 24-hour stories. So you, you can post without having to worry about completely like editing your photos and doing everything. Right. You can curate your feed um, a lot more that way. So you know, Instagram is the most, probably the most popular and most used platform now, and then YouTube is the other one, and I'll categorize it as a social network because I do think it is a social network, but I don't know the stats off the top of my head, but I think there's something um, around the, uh, the fact that people are now watching more YouTube videos than they're watching cable television, which doesn't shouldn't surprise That's anyone. True. You can do it on demand, you can do it at any time. And, you know, just like what you're doing right now, there's been a rise of vloggers who are sharing their lives and like the whole democratization of video content creation has made things just level playing field for everyone. You don't need a big production company. You just need whatever's in your pocket, your camera phone and boom. And hopefully the ability to tell a good story, I guess. The storytelling is the yeah. key differentiator <laughs> in this. Like you could break out a camera and start talking and maybe you'll get a few people, but if you're able to tell a story like we've talked about, like some of the bloggers that right. exist out there, like Casey Neistat and stuff. These people are able to just tell an interesting story from the most mundane things, just through your daily life. Mm -hmm. Or travel, which is uh, a little bit more interesting. But it's just me personally, I find myself watching more. I watch more YouTube than I watch television. Oh, I've days. lost hours of my life on YouTube. Just, yeah. you know, you get sucked in and the next thing you know you're watching uh, road rage videos or whatnot have you ever heard of hot ones no okay so hot ones, have to look for that. hot ones is a uh it's a web series from complex magazine it's on youtube with sean evans he's the host and what it is is celebrities come on and they're asked 10 questions while they eat 10 increasingly hot hotter wings that sounds interesting. until they get to the final one which is like the hottest wing sauce in the world it sounds like something my daughter would like to watch actually. I, listen it yeah. sounds ridiculous but i encourage you and you and everyone to just check it out because it's 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 compelling it's compelling and it's different so so tell me something so you said like a lot of the trends are sort of you're seeing it moving more towards like instagram mm -hmm. and i'm on instagram and i see i i think i can see where um companies would sort of migrate towards like Instagram as a platform, especially if they're like lifestyle type, yeah. um, clothing or those types of things. But like, 
what about like a tech company like mm -hmm. Juniper or something? Yeah. Is that like a really a viable medium for them? Or, yeah. you know, are we still seeing like maybe like YouTube is really the predominant platform for like a tech company? So I think it's just you got to take a different angle towards it. Um, so yeah, obviously when you're looking at a visual, completely visual platform like Instagram, you want to have something visual that you can show. And right. I mean, for Juniper, we can only show so many pictures of MXs and, and yeah. things like that, especially right. if you move I more mean, towards software. And the geeks <laughs> like that. Yeah. But, you know. But <laughs> the better part that you can, that any company can do is really focus on the people behind the brand. And that's what, you, that's what we're doing and that's what a lot of other brands are doing. I know um, Facebook does it. Virtually every company that is in the tech world, they have at least their own separate Instagram dedicated to the employees. And what it does is cool. you can focus on the employees. And I, I have a belief that every single person has a very unique and interesting story, no matter what. There's always something unique about someone that you can tell. And, you know, it's great for us to be able to showcase that and show people the people behind the brand who makes Juniper great. And by opening that up, you kind of shed light on, um, you know, the corporate culture uh, as well as, you know, the opportunities that exist at the company and, you know, just some of the fun things that go on there. So I've talked to a few college students um, and interns over the course of the last couple of years and I always ask them, what platforms do you look at when you're researching a company? And the first one they always talk about is Instagram. Yep. It's not Facebook, it's not Twitter, it's not even LinkedIn, it's Instagram. They'll go okay. onto the Instagram and they'll just see what life is like at that company and be like, do I want to work here? And obviously there's a little bit more that goes into it, but it is an opportunity for a company to maybe get a leg up. If you're able to, again, tell these interesting stories um, through just the behind the scenes look at the company. Right. You put yourself in a great position to attract some really good talent. That's cool. Well, last, let's see. Uh, my next question is kind of around like somebody who might be wanting to further their, you know, social media brand mm -hmm. or just want to just kind of break into social media. Do you have any suggestions there for somebody that's maybe just kind of branching out into that arena? Yeah. You know? Uh, do your research. So figure out what sort of niche you want to go to. Okay. And I know there's going to be a lot of trial and error over the first couple months that you're going through it. Um, but do a lot of research into people that you want to kind of model your future success off of. Right. right. So see what they're doing. Um, see what sort of style they're doing. Figure out how you can do something beyond that. Yep. So if they're posting certain types of pictures or they're providing these certain types of tips, figure out a way you can do something one step a little bit better than what they're doing on the tip front. Maybe be a little bit more consistent. Consistency is key, especially on social. The only reason someone's gonna follow you is if you're producing content. And if you're only producing content once every two months or something like that, right. like what sort of incentive you're not gonna really, you do? Yeah, you're not gonna really attract a following or anything like no. that. No, so. so consistency is important. Consistency and research and obviously, lastly, measure the analytics. Just whatever analytics you can get, cool. whatever you can manage. Is there any tools that you guys use that are that you might? I mean, I've used um, like Hootsuite before, yeah. and some of those kinds of so tools. So it, it, it's interesting. Um, it kind of depends upon what uh, what you're so, sort of establishing yourself as. Like, if you're establishing Stefan Fuant the brand, and so you have like your own business sort of page. Right. There's a there's a lot of um, internal analytics that the platforms have. Like Instagram has the analytics, and Facebook, and Twitter and uh, even LinkedIn. Um, so uh, definitely dive into those if you could. Um, and then, you know, if you are gonna try to get started on something like Instagram and YouTube, or maybe YouTube here, don't forget about the SEO value behind it too. Okay. You need to really focus on the keywords, the descriptions, um, and everything. Uh, everything that you could think of with All SEO. All that metadata. Still, you need to pull that in and analyze it. It's, it sounds yeah. ridiculous, but like truly, yeah. there's YouTube is the biggest, the second biggest search engine in the world now. And so being able to index that content is their major goal. And so, you know, if you can take a look at what other people are writing in that field and figure out ways to just do it a little bit better or create a little bit of a niche somehow, then just go through there. And I think you'll, uh, you'll start to see a little bit of success and then consistency, boom. So we know you have your own personal Twitter account and some mm -hmm. of these things. Would you mind sharing with the, the viewers, you know, where they can follow you? No, and, you know, they can't find me. <laughs> can't find me. No, literally at Kevin Olivieri everywhere. Twitter. And you're on Instagram, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Instagram. Okay. Uh, Facebook. I, I don't really use it. Yeah, you're not, you're not yeah. really active on it. I don't 
don't want anyone adding me on cool on personal well kevin it's been a great uh, pleasure having yeah. you here today thank, thank, you, thank you so, so much, much. We've, uh, i've enjoyed working with you as you sort of progress through your journey and at juniper and yeah. sort of managing uh social media and digital content and everything so it's a real pleasure to have you today this is great and i can't wait to do this this time next year cool thanks a lot we'll see you guys at next works next year 2019